Hi guys, welcome to another edition of Dan's Car and Studio. Um, today, as promised, I'm going to be doing a, an update on my Range Rover, which I had some work done on last week. Um, it had some squeaky pulleys on the auxiliary belt and the auxiliary belt needed changing. Um, so I, I've had that done and it now sounds like it should. I don't have the uh, symphony of mice underneath my bonnet anymore, which is great. Uh, and it was quite embarrassing driving in the morning and it was squealing as I was going down the road. But that's all gone, thankfully. Uh, so that was that's a job well done by Vogue Autos in uh, Ryslip. And they also did uh, an oil service and a transmission uh, service as well. So I'll update you in a sec on those. Now I was intending to start today's video with a nice outside shot, but as you can probably see outside it, as in you know, good old Devon style, it's raining and uh, I don't fancy getting wet, so I'm actually going to do it from inside the car. Perhaps if it dries up later I'll uh, get some shots outside then. Having owned the car for two years now, it's actually I think two years and a week, um, I thought I'd uh, do an update on the running costs because I did one at 18 months but during the first 18 months I didn't really drive it because of the pandemic it wasn't doing a lot of mileage I wasn't doing many trips but over the last six months I have been doing more mileage I have been using it more and I've just had a service done which was expensive let's put it that way it was expensive to be fair last year service it didn't need anything so I was expecting this year's to need some work um, and I took it into the Range Rover specialists as I mentioned before Vogue Autos they know what they're doing with these Range Rovers they're really good uh, based in South Ryslip um, so look them up if you're in London or near London definitely worth checking out Now, as I say, I booked it in with them to have the two pulleys done and the squeaking alternator belt, and also an oil service, and I asked them to do a transmission flush and service as well. It didn't need it, but I just thought, if I'm going to keep the car, then those sort of things are worth doing, because realistically now it should be good for another 10 years, that, that transmission, and it, it does... It, to be fair, it now runs a lot smoother. The gear changes were smooth before, don't get me wrong, but it's quieter and smoother, and it just, just feels, and just the knowledge of knowing that that's been done puts my mind at rest, and I know now I haven't got to worry about the transmission, um, unless something crops up, but I'm, I'm not expecting it to, because this car has been looked after. It does have full service history, all of it with uh, Range Rover. This is the first independent service it's had away from a Range Rover dealer but as I say Vogue Autos are um, specialists in Range Rovers and they do register all their services with Range Rover as well so if you go to them it will appear in your service history in a printout so worth worth remembering. Now what they did find that I was unaware of was that the lower arm on the passenger side was actually on the verge of going so they, they replaced that for me as well i did the driver's side you may remember uh for the mot about five six months ago um but this as i say needed doing um so they they, they did that as well while they had it in um and as i say they did a, did the uh, oil service and the transmission service they changed the filter on the transmission they changed they did a flush they changed obviously changed the oil uh, so done a really good job there and as I say it's running smoother I've no longer got squeaky pulleys which is fantastic and the car now just feels really as it should so it almost feels like it's a brand new car again to be honest there's nothing I can really fault about it. Now I know a lot of you are going to shout at me and say, oh hang on a minute, you told me you don't have any problems with your Range Rover and yet you've just told us you've had a massive service done that's cost you a lot of money and I'm not going to tell you how much that is until I come to my costs. And you're right, yeah, it, you know, it, 
it's going to cost more to maintain one of these than it is to maintain, you know, a Ford Focus or a you know, whatever, you know, a Vauxhall Astra. They're expensive cars, they're big cars, they've got a lot on them, but the general servicing costs actually aren't that much higher. Obviously the running costs are higher, so don't kid yourself you're going to buy one of these and it's going to be cheap to own, because it's not. Because you're going to use more fuel, they use a lot of fuel, they've got big engines, you're going to pay a lot more in road tax, it's the top band for road tax, um, which is, you know, 550 quid a year, so there's no escaping that, you're not going to get cheap road tax, and that's probably going to go up, I would imagine, and insurance, you know, insurance isn't cheap either, because again, they know it's, a, it's an expensive car, and if something, you know, you have an accident, it's not going to be cheap to fix it, so... You know, insurance isn't cheap either. But having said that, mine was about 476 for the year, I think. So, not bad, I thought, you know. But I've got full no-claims discount, and it's protected as well, so that's good. But, like I say, if you're thinking of buying a, a Range Rover, and you've got no money, no contingency for breakdowns and servicing, please don't get one, because you'll only be disappointed, because the one you can afford will be the one that's going to break down I you know I was lucky I, I paid 10 grand for this car and it's been brilliant you know I, I looked for a long time to find it but it's worth it's worth more it's worth more than 10 grand albeit I've spent a few thousand on it but that money hasn't been wasted because I, I believe and I think this is a fact this car is worth what I paid for it and what I've spent on it so effectively, it, there's been no depreciation over those two years. And as I say, in a minute, when I go through the costs, you'll see what I mean, and I'll do a rundown. And as I say, the transmission service, I didn't have to have that done, you know. I, that was my choice. Um, so I could have saved there. I could have saved on that. Didn't have to do it. But if you're going to have one of these cars, you need to look after it, really. And it's better to do a job like that, and then you've got peace of mind. You know you're not going to have a problem with that gearbox if, you know f for some time well you shouldn't do unless it, you know some sort of catastrophe happens but in theory that should be good now same with the belts auxiliary belts all done it's got a timing chain so there's no cam belt to worry about so the belts have been changed the pulleys have been changed again i shouldn't have to worry about those for a good few thousand miles you know the 50 to 100 thousand they shouldn't give me any problems. And otherwise, the engine's running really well. No, no real issues or problems. Really smooth. And can't really fault the driving of it. It's, it's, it's a lovely car. I'm just going to slow down some people here. So overall, I love this car because, yes, it's not cheap to run, but if you can afford to run one, they are a lovely thing to have and own. Okay, right, I think I'm just going to pull in here, and I can do a little, hopefully, do a little bit of filming here where it's reasonably quiet. So. I'll just get the paperwork out and then I'm going to run through the running costs with you. Let's switch the engine off for a minute. And as I say, I'm going to run through the, run the running costs for the past two years with you. Okay, let's have a look at these uh, running costs then. First of all, I'm going to start with the service the other day because, as I say, in my opinion, it was very expensive. And in my opinion, it was worth it because I want to keep the car. I want to look after it. A lot of you are probably going to have heart failure, including my wife when she sees the cost of this. But this car now should go for two years without any problems at all. And that's really... I've budgeted for us to spend £1,000 a year on this car. So for servicing, etc. This is what I, the work I had done cost me £1,906.94, which a lot of you are going to think, oh my god, I could get a car for that. Well, 
you could but you couldn't get a Range Rover and you certainly wouldn't have a 2011 Range Rover and you certainly wouldn't have a 2011 Range Rover that was reliable and trouble free for you know hopefully a couple of years if not more without just general servicing so i'm going to run through the cost because as i say you probably think oh my god that's horrendous and as i say shout out again to vogue autos because they are really good and definitely worth checking out now the oil service uh itself was a hundred pound labor oil filter 20 pounds pollen filter uh, they changed in the cabin as well, £25. Engine flush, fuel flush and screen wash, £28. Uh, DPF uh, engine oil, 8 litres, £116. They then put an engine treatment in for £29. Gearbox oil change, the labour was £120. Again, this job, as I say, didn't need doing, but I wanted to get it done. The gearbox filter was £119. These prices are all plus fat, by the way. Eight litres of eight-speed gearbox oil, £175. Not cheap, but thankfully something you only have to do every 10 years or so. They did the lower front suspension arm, um, which the arm was 25 quid, labour was 75 quid. Uh, one tensioner at £80 for the pulleys on the front. Two pulleys, £120 and five pence, and two belts, one at £81.66 and one at £46.99. And the labour to do the pulleys and the belts was £320. Um, and then you just had sundries and waste disposal, £50 plus VAT. So the total without the VAT came to £1,589.12. VAT, unfortunately we can't avoid it, 317.82, which brings us to that scary total. <laughs> I'm not going to deny it's scary, and it's far more money than I've ever spent on servicing the car before, of £1,906.94. But, as I say, I've, I have now got a car that is in really good condition. The only thing they've noted, and actually I've noted, is that the rear wash white well the wipe works but the rear washer doesn't work and that's something i'm going to investigate myself so i'm not i wasn't too fussed about that but i will investigate that myself just because i want the thing to work as it should really but yes just to cover after the big service everything else that's been done um as i say i had the windscreen which i had to pay the excess which was 90 pounds plus fat um i had some body work done because someone keyed the car down the side and also had some rust on the tailgate that's was 600 pounds i also had someone hit the car this side which was annoying which again was an insurance excess to pay i did claim an insurance for that because it was a big claim and that was 650 pounds for my excess the new wheels were 849 pounds the new tires were 369.60 that included balancing fitting and fitting the wheels i also had to buy a new set of wheel nuts which were 50 pounds i've had two mot's one was 35 pounds the other 39.99 for one of the mot's i had to fit a lower arm on the driver's side near side uh, suspension which was 104 pounds 99 which i fitted myself when I got the car initially, the high-level brake light didn't work. I bought one on eBay from Powerful UK, who do a lot of great spares for Range Rovers. Check them out. Um, that was thirty-five seventy-nine, and it's black. The, the original was red. This one's black, and it looks a lot nicer, I think. I also had the service done at Range Rover, which cost me four sixty-four sixty-six, which was just a, a general oil service. The car itself, obviously, that cost me ten thousand pounds. I have bought a cable for the uh, iPod, which I say was £49 on eBay. With that, I also had to get a, an iPhone adapter, which was £30 to take it from the old style iPhone to the new style. I bought a boot liner, just to protect the boot, which was £18.95 on eBay. Bargain protects the boot. A new battery was £169.90. Um, I bought some locking wheel nuts because the new wheels and nuts didn't come with locking nuts and I thought it would be a good idea to put those on so that was £49.99 um, 
as I say, front bonnet struts £40.42, tailgate struts £27.28, a spare key, which was £225, and repairing the original key. And then that big service. And that really is it, obviously, tax, car tax, insurance, times two for the year, two years. And obviously fuel to run the thing. The other thing, as I say, was the side step that rusted through that I needed to replace. £175 or so on eBay. I'll try and put the links below if I can find them. Uh, below the video so you can you can see what I used but as I say I've done what I set out to do which was give you a, a, an honest opinion of what it's cost to run this car for two years honest costing including everything down to the insurance tax um, MOTs the lot so I'm not hiding anything I'm telling you exactly how it is exactly what it's cost me and you can make your own mind up if you want one or not. This has done 117,000 miles. It only just hit that a couple of weeks ago, as you can see in the screenshot there. That, you know, 117, it doesn't feel like it's done 117,000 at all. Feels, drives like new. The only minor things now I need to sort out are the seat is a bit worn on the edge, which I've started to repair. I'm going to finish that and I'll show you the end result. And the front bumper needs a respray because it's been badly sprayed at some point. Um, not urgent, but I'd like to get it done just to, to make it, you know, finish it off as everything else has been done. Oh, one fine and one other thing. Coming back from London, having had all this work done, thinking, great, I finally got the car how I want it. Only the seat to finish, only the front bumper to do, nothing else. And there was a big... Well, I'll go and describe it. I thought something hit the windscreen. A big clatter. And I thought I thought at first a, a windscreen wiper had flown off a car going in the other direction and hit my windscreen. But when I got home, I had a look and the cover trim that covers the A-post on the passenger side had actually got ripped off in the wind. Now, it was, to be fair, it was a very windy day. Um... But it's really annoying because the car was almost right. But it must have been going. It's probably the age of the plastic or whatever. But an unusually windy day. And it, it I'd weather the wiper caught it as it went across because it was blowing those as well. It's ripped it off. Now I thought, okay, that's that's all right. It's a trim, it's 20 quid. This is where your costs come in. Um, yeah, if you can find one uh, from a breaker's yard, you probably could get one for 20 pounds. But of course, my luck, looked on all the breaker's yards and eBay everywhere. No one had one for the passenger side. They all seemed to have the driver's side. Sod's law. Or they were all for the earlier or later version uh this is sort of the in-between one between uh 2010 to 2012 um where it's slightly different i don't know whether that trim's different mind you but they didn't even have one for an earlier car now i rang <laughs> land rover in the week and guess how much 113 pounds for a little bit of plastic and it does come with clips so you know i should hope so too at that cost but i'm going to pick that up hopefully tomorrow they're going to ring me when it's in and i'll clip that back on but yeah i just hate the car looking horrible and it doesn't do any doesn't leak doesn't do anything else it just doesn't look very sightly and i want my car to look nice i really do and uh it'll be back to its normal self again hopefully tomorrow so there you go that's the that's the costs and updates for the year hope you've enjoyed it if you have enjoyed it please give us the thumbs up do subscribe because as i say i'm, I'm going to keep posting videos um and if you subscribe and click the bell then you'll get a notification when i post a new video so you won't miss out um on any new stuff i do post so thanks again guys take care and i'll look forward to seeing you in the next video hopefully when the sun's shining Hi guys, just a quick update back inside there in the dry. So the total cost of all those parts that I um, showed in the video came to £5,013.91. So that's £5,013.91. Add to that the cost of the car, which was £10,000. That gives a total of 
£15,013.91. And as I said before, the value of the car is actually around that now. It's that I'm looking online, you can't get one with this sort of mileage, this sort of history. They are about 14995 So really, what I've spent on it makes it worth what it's worth today. So, technically, you could argue it hasn't cost me anything for the last two years, but that's probably pushing it a bit. See you next time.